Yep. All right, let's get going then. Welcome everybody to uh, co our Coaches Caravan and UNT Alumni Live. We're so happy to have you here. Today we are coming to you live from Apogee Stadium's Hub Club, where we are hanging out with UNT men's basketball head coach Grant McCaslin, women's basketball head coach Jaylee Mitchell, football head coach Seth Luttrell, athletic director Ren Baker, and some of their amazing student athletes for our 2021 Virtual Coaches Caravan. With the help of MC Hank Dickinson, we'll find out what's coming up for the North Texas Athletics and get answers to all your important Mean Green questions. Make sure you stay tuned till the end because we're giving away some UNT Athletics prize packs today. Before we dive in, just a few reminders for you. If you're joining us on Zoom, please keep an eye on the chat section at the bottom of your screen. I'll be dropping some important links there and you can also use, me, use that to send me questions for the coaches. We'll have a big Q&A with everyone at the end of the program. I'll also post a link for a survey there. As always, fill that out and you'll be entered to win a UNT prize pack. If you're watching on Facebook, hi, you can leave us your questions in the comment section there and we'll get to as many as we can. Now, without any further ado, I'm just gonna hand things over to our MC Hank Dickinson to get our program started with Coach Caslin. Hank, take it away. Claudia, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in today for this summer edition of the Coach's Caravans. We're gonna kick it off with a couple of heavy hitters, the heroes of March. Thomas Bell, the redshirt senior from East St. Louis, who was a big, big part of March Madness and soon to embark on year number five is Grant McCaslin, head coach of the Mean Green. Guys, on behalf of everybody that's watching, thanks for the memories. What a march. Coach, how often do you think about it and get the same chills I've got right now talking about it? Oh, just every day, honestly. I mean, what a unique experience it was and a blessing because of the teams that have come before. That's the part that you love. And everywhere you go, the excitement that was created, the people that enjoyed North Texas basketball playing in the NCAA tournament, winning. And, uh, you know, I thought it brought a lot of people together, which is what we love as a part of sport and what we love being a part of North Texas athletics. Uh, so, you know, everywhere we go, there's always people that are still reminding us of the unique experience. They got to see it in their home or where they were and how they cheered and how everybody thought they were crazy. Um, that part of it, you'll never get old of hearing those stories of how fun it was for people to enjoy playing in the NCAA tournament. Thomas, you were a huge part of it, not only this year, but the previous year where this team was robbed of the same opportunity. What did it feel like in Frisco to be in front of those Mean Green fans and know that you had succeeded where you probably could have done the same thing the year before what what were your emotions that night I mean just try to seize the opportunity and you know just uh, make it count because you know uh when the probably probably uh opportunity we'll never get to get again so we just want to make the most of it and just to uh get the fans a show uh come all the way out to Frisco and supporting us you know we really appreciate it and uh that's what makes us hungry to you know get back to it every year this guy gave the fans a show. Uh, even when the three-point shot looked like it was going away, he found it at the right time. Uh, and then you were huge in the overtime win uh, in the 13-4 upset. 16 points, 42 minutes. How much did this guy mean to just the overall success? I mean, if you want to talk about the one player that on both sides of the ball impacted our team the most, it'd be Thomas. You know, T-Bell, we call him from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, the blocks he had in that Purdue game. I was just with Matt Painter at USA Basketball, and he was talking about Thomas Bell and his defense in the paint. And then he scored, you know, I think the most he'd scored in, in a while in the biggest game of the year. And just shows you his heart. And that's what I love about our program moving forward is he's the heart of this team. He's probably got the best chance of being an NBA player of anybody on our roster. And it's because he can do everything. There's nothing he's not capable and he's growing. He's not only growing as a basketball player, but growing as a leader, as a person, outstanding student. So we're thrilled to have him as our, you know, as our leader for our program and such a great ambassador for our program and our team. Your biggest rejection, though, in my opinion, came in the offseason when you eschewed this transfer portal that so many kids are looking at. What made you want to stay and take that fifth year right here in Denton at UNT? Um, I mean, I feel like it's a good spot for me. You know, I got a good coaching staff. Uh, 
you know, they believe in me, they trust in me. And it's a good place for me to grow. I done grow, I done grew here for about two years. I done grew to a better person, a, a better player. Uh, you know, I just want to take the challenge uh, to be able to be a leader. You know, that's why I look forward to just get better, you know, uh, every year. And I feel like I accomplish a lot of good things here and, uh, you know, and just be, just improve. So, Mac, let's talk about his growth. His first year, he's one of two players in the nation to not start a game and yet lead his team in rebounding. His second year, he starts every game. You can't get him out of the lineup. What's ahead for him in this bonus fifth year? Yeah, well, it, the excitement of moving forward is kind of the whole program's established. You know, when you walk into the gym now, everybody's working and we're not coaching as coaches and stilling. We sat in this room four years ago, now five at this time and said, like, we want to win championships. We want to play in NCAA tournaments and we want to play for national championships. And it's guys like him that their talent level is actually at that level of playing. But it's what he does every day as far as his approach and the approach of the program that you can see is a blast. They're having fun, but they're coaching each other. So it's them that are building the culture, not just coaches trying to instill it and trying to prove to people, we can play in the NCAA tournament. We can do, trust me, we can do, we can beg and just begging people like, we trust me, we can do this. No, he believes that's why he's here. And that's why he wanted to come back because he wanted to do more. And he wants this to be the expectation of why you come to UNT and why you want to play basketball at North Texas and why you want to be a part of this institution. One of the first things Ren Baker did when he got here was put an emphasis on sports nutrition. And you're kind of a poster child for that. You came in here a real skinny rail, but with the help of coach uh, Andrew Wright, your strength coach, you've changed your physique. How big has his emphasis and the focus on sports nutrition changed your body in two years? Uh, well, we, uh, we just lost one of our nutritionists, shout out Sam. She did a great job, uh, you know, just keeping us with shakes you know, protein, you know, how poor sleep is. And then, you know, Coach Wright, uh, he pushes he push me in the weight room, he pushes everybody. Uh, you know, everybody is the same. Uh, you know, it's just hard work. Uh, and, you know, we just hit, we just hit the, we hit the weights hard and uh, he just does a great job of getting us together. Now he's a, a great success story. And I know Coach Wright's just one of those people that maybe fans don't see all the time, but you've assembled such a great team of assistant coaches and support staff. How have you kept that group intact? I mean, with all the success, I would think they'd start getting poached. Well, that's a credit to our president, Neil Smoktris, unbelievable in his vision for what we're doing and his commitment to making this place great. And what Rim Baker's done here and his heart for people. Um, we had a tragic loss this off season and to talk about our program without talking about coach Hag and our families, my wife, our four kids, you know, T Bell's family, his mom and dad, sisters, just amazing. It's, it's a family, right? I mean, coach Hodge is family, coach Reen, coach B, you know, it's just, that's part of what we do is our families are close we're all close um, and that's what makes it unique. And I think it's people that are the difference. We've got a great university, but it really is the people that we love being around. And Hank, we're throwing you in there too, man. You're our family. <laughs> Just a beautiful part of our journey is who you get to do it with. And we love that part. So why they stay, uh, it's not because of me. That's a fact. Uh, it's because of the people that we're around every day. I'm glad you mentioned Coach Hag. That was a beautiful celebration of life that you had such a hand in. And even in a tragedy, and it was a tragedy to, to see a person like that get robbed of, of the rest of a, a beautiful life. Uh, it was really important, I thought, from a basketball community for your players to see how much love there is in your sport for people to do things the right way. And boy, he was one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, it's there's not a day goes by that we don't remember a great championship, but honestly, the heart behind it is what who Coach Hag was every day, and that's part of our journey moving forward and, and you know, kind of who we want to be is to honor him and what we do and how we do it. We break down our huddles for Coach Hag, and, you know, it's part of a beautiful part of being a part of a family. There's the struggle, but there's also um, – the beauty of coming out of the struggle because you know that that's what he would want for us. So uh, we're excited about the future and so thankful for the, for, for him and, and for the opportunity of being a part of such a great team and program. Let's wrap it up. You just had a great opportunity. Talk about the uh, coaching extra that you got to experience last week. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that just goes to show you where our team is, that they would offer an opportunity to, to work with USA Basketball. I mean, it says a lot about our program and the people we work with every day and the success we've had, because you don't get those opportunities unless you're a part of a great program. So, um, you know, it was neat. It was, you know, a, a, a training camp for the U19s. Um, and it was a part of the selection process. They already have three coaches that coach the team. And we went as a part of the camp to help narrow down the team from 27, 26 to 16. And then they take it from there and go on and play in the U19 championships later on uh, in July. But really an unbelievable introduction to helping out USA basketball and completely attributed to the success of the people here in our program and was an honor and a once in a lifetime time opportunity to be a part of USA basketball. Wonderful for you. And it, it speaks to what you've been a part of Thomas Bell. So thank you for coming back for what will be a great fifth season for you, coach. I don't know how we can keep topping things, but you find a way to do it each season. Thanks for all you're bringing to the table every day for North Texas athletics. Go mean green. Go mean green. All right. That's Grant McCaslin and Thomas Bell. And now we're going to bring in Casey Kamenicki and she's got some great giveaways to talk about Casey. Thank you, Hank. And that is right. I'm going to make my way up here. Today, we've got a lovely UNT Alumni Association prize pack that is packed full of really great mean green goods. And our first winner is Mr. Jack Fincher. So Jack, we'll be in touch via email to get this prize pack to you just as soon as possible so you can show off all of your Alumni Association goods. And while we give everyone a minute to get set up and get comfortable, just a reminder about our Coaches Caravan number two coming up on August 14th that will be right here in Denton, Texas. So make plans now to get out to Apogee and see our coaches in person for the first time in a really long time. So Hank, I will turn it back to you and go me green. All right, nothing but ladies on the set now as Casey gets done with the uh, her first segment, she'll be back with more later on, but please welcome now the first lady of Mean Green Athletics, Jaylee Mitchell, our head women's basketball coach, and one of her stars, Quincy Noble. Quincy, thanks for being a part of this today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start with you a little bit. You, um, you're a student athlete who had to experience that season off before getting back on the court, and you did it in fluid fashion. How hard was it to go from a year away of competition, even though you were still working out, to really getting out there and making a difference for a team? Um, I'm not going to lie. It was really hard, you know, like sitting out, especially if you've been playing, you're like, since you started nonstop. So to sit out a year and you're like, just watching like, oh, I want to help. I want to help. I want to contribute. I just feel like my coaching staff made it pretty easy for me to, you know, this is a time to understand, like, you need to take basketball to a different level. You need to understand the knowledge of it. So sitting out helped me understand the game plan of what we wanted to do here at me, um, North Texas, helped me be a better teammate. You know, I looked at it, once they taught me how to look at it in a different way, it was easier. It was definitely hard at first not being able to play because as an athlete, you just think like, hey, that's all I can do is I can just put the ball on the hoop. Like, no, you, you're able to do more. So I think with the coaching staff that I had, they helped me. Coach, you uh, had a team that got off to a very fast start in league play, and then you ended with the most wins in a long time. How critical was she to that fast start and the good finish? Well, big time. You know, as an all-conference player, uh, I think that says it all right there. You know, just what she meant to our team and uh, what she means to our team. Um, and like you mentioned, her year off, I don't, I don't think she skipped a beat. You know, I know she's uh, she mentioned how difficult it was, but I love that you couldn't tell, you know, I thought she was, uh, she's been a great teammate these last two years, um, but last year was so, um, it was just really fluid for her, you know, I thought she worked extremely hard, sometimes that's difficult to do in your year off, um, but I think, you know, she made up her mind of who she wanted to be and how she wanted to help this team, and uh, she accomplished that last year because of the work she put in the year before. You know, you're one of the few coaches that walks into your arena and has to coach underneath your banner. Um, but I think what this season proved was it's been a while since North Texas women's basketball has realized some of the success that it did when you were playing. How often did you reflect on that and how close you have this program to where you've really wanted it to be? 
Well, I get to reflect on it fairly often because we talk about it in recruiting. Um, and Quincy actually just told me that I needed to wear my jersey for a game. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that will happen, but uh, it's it's outstanding to have that feeling because you know even when I um, when I accepted this job in 2015, that was the goal to not just get it back to uh, those wonder years, but to get past that you know and to achieve even more and so just to have a group who is bought in to that who, to have a group who has you know um put themselves in a position to realize you know a top four finish in conference usa and to uh, know that they have the opportunity to compete for a championship and um just to be hungry for that you know i think i think knowing what it takes to get there is half the battle uh and you know you can see in them after this past year, even this summer, we, this is week four, they've been incredible. You know, our returners have been so awesome. And um, they've, I think, um, made the newbies kind of buy in a lot, a lot faster and understand uh, a lot quicker, you know, how they can help take us to a new level. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for where we are, but I'm also excited uh, about where we're going. And obviously, you know, um, Quincy is a huge part of that, but everybody is, you know, each and every one of our players um, just have that hunger. They have that chip, you know, and it's like, we're going to we're going to do this, you know, and so I, I love that I can feed off of that as as a coach. Um, and, you know, it's it's exciting. It's exciting for my past teammates. You know, <laughs> uh, every time we, we talk, they're asking about our team, our players. And so that's a fun thing. Now, Quincy, you've been exposed to a lot of different coaching styles throughout your career. And obviously it's now uh, finishing up with Coach Mitchell, but your dad was your AAU coach. Mm -hmm. How much of what he taught you, how much of his voice is in your head every time you still step on the floor? I wouldn't be who I am without my dad. So <laughs> he's taught me everything I know. You know, it was definitely hard. Playing for your dad, that's hard to separate coach and dad. Took me a long time. Literally, I don't think I learned until I got to college, like, oh, you know, hey, dad, <laughs> you know, so it was hard. It was super hard playing for your dad just because, you know, you're playing with a lot of other girls, you know, they think, oh, your dad's going to be easy on you. Your dad's going to be easy on you. He is the opposite. He is my biggest critic. So, you know, like having him in my life is just great. I, you know, I wouldn't be who I am without him. So I think he's the reason why I'm the player I am today. And he's still coaching AAU ball, still he's busy. Still coaching, still, he loves it. Basketball is him. Like, I don't think he would be, I don't think he knows how to function without being a part of basketball. He's been, that's been his life. That's been my life. I grew up around it. So that's all he knows. So I'm sure he's not giving up anytime soon. We were kind of joking around before we uh, took the set here that really a lot of those kind of things never slowed down despite the pandemic. Um, how, how did it affect the way you looked at recruiting and the way the, the old paradigm used to be? How, how have things changed since COVID in terms of just the activity? Well, recruiting was really tough because it was all online. Um, and, you know, unless you knew um, everything about this player, you kind of had a hard time, you know, if they changed their hair or if they uh, had on a different number, you know, as far as Jersey, it was really difficult uh, to, to keep track. But at the same time, um, you know, I mean, we had to do what we had to do, you know, and I, I think it uh, helped us as coaches just to kind of understand the importance of the live evaluation. I mean, you know, you can't really tell, um, you know, how fast or how tall or, you know, and so we, we've had these unofficial visits lately. I'm like, man, you're, <laughs> you look different than I thought, you know, but when I say the importance, you know that, that it's valuable, but you don't understand. Um, I, I think you can kind of get complacent a little bit with, with, um, you know, just the in-person like, okay, well, I'll just, you know, watch online. I've, I've heard that from, from other coaches, but I, I think live, it, there's nothing like a live evaluation. And so we're eager and excited to get back in the gym, uh, looking forward to seeing these young ladies that we've been talking to all year long. And, um, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to that. And I think they are too, you know, everybody's super excited about this July. Like that's all people can talk about. When are y'all coming? What days can you get out? You know? And so it'll, it'll be nice to get back to normal. I can guarantee you from a broadcast perspective, 
being live is so much better than calling off Absolutely. a monitor. And this was a year where a lot of broadcasters had to get used to that. Now you're, you're interested in broadcasting, sports broadcasting. Tell me what about it appeals to you, Quincy, and what is it you want to do? I just know like whenever, you know, the ball stops, I want to be able to still be a part of it, but I also want to be able to, you know, I think being a female broadcaster, I, you know, that's the challenge of that. I want, I accept that. Like I want that. So I think just being able to, speak my mind in my sport and, you know, give my input or any sport, honestly, just to be able to be a part of something great. I want to do that. So I want to make a difference in that. And that's probably the reason why I really, really interested in it. Seems like she may have a knack for this. <laughs> I think so. You, you will never have the same conversation with Quincy, you know, so I, I think that's something that's, uh, you know, definitely a, a plus um, with her and, and her future career. I look forward to, to listening. She always has great ideas, great comments. Uh, so I think she'll be awesome. She's got a pretty good vacation upcoming. You and grandma are heading to Vegas. Is that right? <laughs> that's a cool grandma. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to Vegas with both my grandparents. I love them so much. They're going to drive down from um, Fairfield, California. So I'm so excited to see them. I haven't seen them in a year. Like, if you know me, I love my grandparents. My grandparents are like another side of me. Like, I just love them. Um, so yeah, they, I'm going to see them. I'm super excited. And they'll be coming out to see us sooner or later. But just so excited to see them. <laughs> so. Tell grandma what, what happens in Vegas. Stay stays in, Vegas. in Vegas. All right. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a memory maker for sure. And before we let you go, coach, um, you did have a change in staff. You've added a new uh, coach. So tell us about Ciara. Yeah, Coach Carl is, is awesome. We call it Coach CC. So if you ever hear that, that's who we're talking about. Um, she spent the last eight years at San Diego State. Um, again, only been here, I guess, two months now, really. Um, but she's been on the floor with us the last four weeks and she's great. I mean, she has awesome ideas. Her energy's great. She's, you would, you would have thought she'd been here longer just because of how she interacts with uh, the team and uh, our staff. Um, just a great personality, um, very um, into basketball and just the uh, leadership and character of the young women that we're in charge of. And so I, I enjoy her. I enjoy that her, um, you know, just the different side that she brings. Uh, she's been great for our staff. She's actually leading uh, our little book club. We have a, we're, we started reading a book uh, the last couple of weeks and she's heading that up. So um, great person. I'm excited for us to all, you know, get in person again so that you guys can meet our staff and get to know them uh, a lot better. But um, Coach Cece, I think you'll find she has that uh, little Cali flair. You know what I mean? She, <laughs> you can tell she's, she's been in the, uh, on that sunny west side but I think this sun has welcomed her uh, maybe she brought some with her I don't know but it's hot <laughs> but coach CC is um, she's looking forward to to um, being here and, and you know making her roots here and and getting to know the people the fans uh, that follow Mean Green Women's Basketball. We're all looking forward to getting back to where everyone can get together Absolutely. and uh, you all did a great job during a struggling season with everything else going on in the world. Uh, an awesome season. And I know you're looking to build on that. Absolutely. Thank Ladies, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. While we let them uh, rush out of the picture, we're going to bring Casey back in with uh, some more good stuff to talk about from UNT alumni. That's right. Thank you, Hank. And thank you, Coach Mitchell and Quincy. You guys are so impressive and so phenomenal. So thank you for your time here today. All right. I have to let you know, Hank, Claudia has it written into the script here that I'm supposed to show people what's in this bag, but I oh, have yeah. no way to pull all of that out and hold everything. So you're going to have to take my word on it, that there are some really cool prizes in here. There's a really nice blanket, a clear stadium bag for when you guys come to the football games. Um, so trust me, there's some great things in here. So our next winner is Laisha T Laisha Trower. Sorry about that, Laisha. I hope I pronounced your name properly. We will be in touch to get this prize package to you uh, via email. And guys, don't go anywhere because we've got one more huge prize package coming up and you don't want to miss this next one. Trust me. And while these guys are getting settled, um, I want to let you guys know that if you are not already a member of the UNT Alumni Association, it's not too late and it's never too late to join. Right now we're doing a join in June membership campaign where you can go to untalumni.com slash J-I-J to secure your membership. And we will send you a nice little welcome package and some seeds to watch your mean green spirit grow. So Hank, back to you.
Casey, a natural displaying all that good swag. All right, well, welcome back. We've got uh, KD Davis, the uh, junior from Ennis, who stars on the defensive side of the ball for Seth Luttrell. And I believe we got Seth Luttrell here joining us virtually. Do we have Coach with us? Are we still trying to find him out there in the wilds of Oklahoma? Oh, did I unmute myself yet? There you are. You got me? The one thing we've all learned to say, you are muted. Good, glad you figured that out, Coach. I, I, it's only taken a year, Hank. <laughs> well, I got a good defender sitting here with me, and we're going to talk to him a little bit. But tell us what you're doing. Are you getting a little bit of R&R &R, uh, this time of year? Yeah, we did. We, uh, we actually brought the kids. They come to camp every year, new life out in Oklahoma. So we brought the kids up here and dropped them off at camp. And Beck and I uh, have a cabin over, I don't know, about 45 miles away. So we're doing the single week this week, and uh, we picked the kids back up Saturday and look forward to getting back and, and starting to rock and roll. Yes, the grind, as you refer to it, will uh, begin soon. And, KD, you've been a part of that grind, but it's going to be a little bit different this year. Phil Bennett is now your defensive coordinator, and you've got a whole new cast of characters on that defensive staff. What, are, what have been your impressions beginning with Phil and then some of the other new parts? Uh, really just the love that uh, he had for the game. He come in every day with a high intensity. He coaches us hard every day. He don't come in and just go day by day. He come in and just make sure we get better each and every day. Yes, and he's a veteran. He's a guy that's been around an awful lot of football. And Seth, I think that's probably one of the things you like about Phil is the number of places he's been, the number of benchmarks in his career, and his ability to get things turned around where maybe things have been struggling. There's no doubt. Phil's unbelievable. I've known Coach Bennett a long time. He was actually uh, one of my coaches. I say one of my coaches. He was a defensive coach at Oklahoma. Uh, when I was a player and that's really where we first kind of grew in our relationship and uh, and really our families did as well um, and so uh, we I followed him his whole career he's followed me um, actually we played against each other year we won the national championship in 2000 him and Jim Gush uh, who's our linebackers coach now uh, were at Kansas State and I think they had the second best team in the country that year we ended up playing them twice once in the regular season and once in the big 12 championship and uh, we we uh, we ended up winning those two games, but I don't think uh, there was another team out there that was as good as them. So uh, he's been around a long time. Uh, you know, he brings a lot of energy. Um, uh, just an unbelievable coach, and uh, not only that, an unbelievable man that that fits our culture. And that's I think what I've learned is the biggest thing is guys that fit fit the culture, uh, that think alike, that that you know love to go to work with each other every single day and I feel like our staff uh, we're having as much fun now as we've had in a long time well uh, your offense has never really ever taken its foot off the pedal uh, last year in the top 25 for yards per game points uh, all of the metrics that basically build a good offense you're still checking those boxes but as defense tries to get better you know one thing KD Davis has never been a part of the problem. 70 tackles last year, five and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. What can you say about this young man and what he's done for your program? His heart and what he puts into the game. Uh, he loves the game. He's passionate about it. Um, he has a full motor every single day. Uh, you know, he doesn't have off days. And that that's one of those things with his energy. Uh, that's what you need from guys like that. You know, he's becoming a great leader for this team. Uh, and I think overall, I think our culture is as good as it's been um, in a long time, just guys coaching each other, uh, holding each other accountable, which is the hardest thing to do for these young men um, and with their peers. Um, and we got a bunch of guys that are doing that. But uh, with his energy every single day, it's, it's fun to go watch them, uh, him go out there and make plays for us. And um, it, it's so infectious. And that's what you have to have. You have to have guys like him and uh, guys that feed off him uh, that make a team that can go on a stretch and win football games. Katie, when you look at uh, college football right now, the focus tends to always be on offense. And sometimes people assume that kids don't want to play defense anymore. They want to catch the ball, run the ball, throw the ball. But defense appeals to you. Has it always been that way? Honestly, in Pee Wee, not really. I always wanted to be the person to be the quarterback and score all the touchdowns. But once I got in high school, I'd rather hit people than to let anybody hit me. So I say defense. Well, and there is an emphasis from a young age with the seven on seven and everything that goes on 
to try to focus on offense, but what has to happen this year for North Texas defensively to turn that corner and, and get back to where it was a couple of years ago where the defense was helping the team win games? Just everybody coming in and liking to the plan that Coach Bennett has. Everybody coming into practice, getting 1% better every day. Just going out there and giving it your all and just play as a team and not just be selfish. And just just having leaders on the defense to have each other going. If somebody having a bad day, just pat them. You know what I'm saying? Just talk to them, have a good talk to them, and make sure they have a good practice. And you're back and forth between Ennis a little bit this summer, but spending most of your time up here, staying in shape? Yes, sir. I've been to Ennis a few times, but most of the, most of the time I've been in uh, then. Well, we know back in your high school days, you would work out around the clock. So we're expecting that to continue. And I, you're looking good. So I know you've been doing something. Oh, yeah. I had put on a few pounds, but I, I lost it. So I'm feeling a lot better now. Coach, I can vouch for him. He's looking good. He's in good shape. And uh, that's not one guy talk. I have to worry about right there. Yeah, I was going to say he's not your he's not your concern. A um, couple questions that have come in, Coach, and as you might imagine, quarterbacks always come up when we talk to you. Is Jace Rudder enrolled or on campus yet? What status can you uh, give us on that? Yeah, he's uh, he's on campus working out with the guys and uh, uh, getting after it. Well, you had two quarterbacks that you used last year, and in a pandemic season, it made sense because you never knew who was going to be ready to play at any position, regardless of just quarterback. But what are your thoughts on quarterback moving forward? And when fans ask the question, what's the status of that position? What's your answer here in June? Right now in June, it's uh, Austin Ani. Uh, you know, I think it's his, uh, you know, to uh, go out there and, and take. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I think we have a strong room. I think it's a, a group of guys that understand the offense, um, they're athletic, uh, on whether they're throwing the football, whether they can run the football and add extra hats, uh, they can bring things to the table. But I think Austin's having a, uh, he had a great spring, great summer, um, you know, and, and some other guys did as well, but we'll see kind of how it moves forward as we always do. Um, uh, but, uh, I'm, everybody's always stressed out about the quarterback. I feel very good at where we're at. Uh, I thought Austin did a lot of great things this past season. And I think it was good for him at times to split time. Sometimes it's good to come to the sideline and kind of watch. And especially for as, as long as he's been out of the game, um, you know, and just getting back in at the speed of the game and uh, getting those reps were huge. And I think uh, he's only going to continue to grow and get better this fall. Uh, and I also believe that you're going to need one, one quarterback uh, to, to run a stretch and win a championship. You never know what's going to happen. And the next guy's got to be ready to step up. Uh, but in order to do that, you got to give them those opportunities and let them get on the field and, and start throwing some of that as well. So uh, I feel good about where we're at. But here's the thing. It's not only about offense. And I've said this and KD knows this. It's about all three faces. We got to win on all three faces. Uh, you're going to have to win two out of the three. Uh, I think Phil has done an unbelievable job this spring. Uh, I think we've looked uh, as good defensively as we have in the last three years. Uh, I think our players are really understanding it. They're coming together. I'm really excited about our defense this fall. I can't wait to watch them go out and compete. And I know we're going to win games because of our defense, because of Coach Bennett and his staff and our players. Um, and, and it's going to take all three phases. And so we're all in it together. Uh, and whenever one side, uh, you know, has a down game, the other two are going to have to pick up the other one. So I think that's where we're at with our culture. I like where we're at. and uh, I'm excited. Before we let uh, KD go, I'm curious, how excited were you for Jalen Darden? Because that's the first time in a long time a Mean Green player has gotten that attention, gotten drafted, and boy, he's a guy that worked for it. Just knowing JD and just being around him outside of football, just everything he'd been through in life with his dad and other family things, just him just going out and coming in every day, his worth ethic, and then, just being a great player, being a great leader. And he always he always led by example. JD always going to be the first in the line. He's going to be the first on the practice field and the last to leave. And so all of that, just his work ethic, I just learned a lot from him about it. And Coach, I know you were amazingly proud of Jalen, but one of the things fans maybe didn't get to appreciate enough was his NFL tryout here in the indoor practice facility. What are your memories of that and, and how well he exceeded in front of some of the big people in the business? It, it nothing surprised me with him uh, on, on pro day when he went out there and competed and uh, all the scouts were watching. I think some of the scouts were really surprised, but 
nothing he did that day surprised me. I knew he was going to. It's it's his nature. It's uh, his makeup. Uh, I've seen him now for uh, what three four years, um, and the way he competes, uh, the way he works. Um, so I was so excited the way he did to go out there and compete uh, because nerves can get to some of them, not him. Uh, but his his pro day was unbelievable. I've never seen a receiver go out there and, and catch every single ball with their hands and, and snatch it out of the air, the way he ran his routes, uh, how he can get in and out of them. Uh, the scouts, you could hear him over there oohing and on. And uh, he, just, he was just a special player. But I'll tell you this right now, uh, he deserves it because of the way he works, the way he put in his time, uh, that was his out. And he said it since day one. Uh, I don't have another out. This is my out. This is the, the route I want to take. Uh, for my family, myself, and uh, uh, we're going to achieve all these goals. And I said, you know what, I'm all in with you, brother, and we're going to get it done. And uh, he had to put in uh, – he had to make sacrifices that a lot of the other guys haven't had to make. And that's why I'm so proud of him, uh, the way he's grown, developed, and continued to get better every single day. Uh, he didn't wait till after his senior year to go put in that work. Uh, he did it the whole time he was here, and it paid off for him. Wonderful achievement for the program and for uh, Coach Latrell and his staff as well for getting Jalen ready to go. And we look forward to what he does in the National Football League. We look forward to watching you play on the defensive side of the ball. KD, thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Seth, stick around. We're going to take a little break here and bring Casey back up. And then we're going to bring Ren Baker on to Dais and we'll visit with Ren as well as the coaches. So, Casey, back to you. Thank you so much, Hank, and thank you, Coach Latrell, for joining us on your summer vacation. I hope you're staying cool. All right, guys, this is the package you've been waiting for. We know that you guys are diehard fans, and nothing would be more exciting than enjoying a home football game from the Hub Club with parking, and what else do we have included in here? Reserve parking at that, sorry. And we're also gonna throw in some alumni swag for you to, to wear to the game and be very proud of and display at your home or office. And our winner now is Evan Frantum. So Evan, congratulations. We will contact you via email to get this package to you. And we look forward to seeing you at the home game, hopefully all of the home games, Evan. And Right now, guys, if you have not already gotten your questions in for Ren, um, now's the time to do it. Drop them in the chat section on Zoom or Facebook, and we'll get those over to him. And one last reminder, head on over to MeanGreenSports.com for information about tickets, game times, and much more. You can also grab some Mean Green swag and make a donation to our Student Scholarship Fund. So back to you, Hank and Ren. Thank you, Casey, and we appreciate everything UNT Alumni Association does for those of you that are tuned in and for alums that need to learn more about it. So as they support Mean Green Sports, we want to support North Texas alumni. Time now to bring in the Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, Ren Baker. It's a big title. I still stumble on that one every now and then. Good to see you. It's been a while. Hank, great to see you. I always enjoy uh, doing these with you. Can't wait uh, till we do the one in person here. Uh, in uh, August, but uh, it, it's good to be back on the caravan tour. You're looking good. You survived the pandemic. Uh, your family came through it okay, but obviously it was a really interesting time to be sitting in your seat. Fans always want to ask a lot of different questions, but the number one thing that I hear a lot is, how did the athletic department survive financially in a season where even though there was great success, you couldn't have the crowds that you normally would have wanted? Yeah, it wasn't uh, easy, uh, certainly, but, um, you know, I, it's a credit, one, to our donors and our fans, many of which uh, allowed us to keep gifts and continue to support us, even though um, in some cases they weren't uh, able to attend. Um, and then our staff, uh, you know, our, our financial teams uh, that starts with Matt Whitty, who's our athletic CFO, uh, our executive and senior staff, and all of our coaches, everybody really got together and said, okay, let's drop expenses into buckets, essential important and elective. And, uh, and by doing that, we're going to emerge from the pandemic uh, very, very healthy. And so uh, it's not, uh, it's not perfect and we still need support, but uh, I'm really pleased with where we are financially. And I think we're going to emerge from this in a better position than many of our peers and many of our competitors and able to pick up where we left off and, and hopefully uh, continue to pass some, some folks on, uh, on the highway. A lot of success in the field of play, and obviously things didn't grind to a halt. You had facilities that were still being uh, in process. Give us an update on golf and the golf facility. The, uh, the Brezzy looks like out this window to my right is coming along great. 
Yeah, it was scheduled to be open, uh, I think, originally in June. Now we're looking at probably a late July, early August timeline. But it's a fantastic facility, uh, and, and we're so excited for our golf program. You look at their achievements this year with the women uh, winning the conference tournament and the men finishing uh, second. Um, you know, and not having that on-campus practice facility, uh, I, I'm really proud of them. This should elevate that program to another level. Very grateful to Bruzzy and the many other donors that supported that that project. And uh, that's a 100% donor-funded uh, project, and, and we're really proud of it. Um, but it's just another one that uh, is on the plan. Uh, we have to, you know, facilities – uh, you, you never get ahead and rest. You're always thinking about the next project. So we're starting to think about those next projects. We've got some work to do at softball. That's a program that's building a lot of momentum, and, and we need to continue to invest in it. We've got some work to do over in the Olympic Village where volleyball uh, it, uh, has their facilities. And then um, ultimately the Athletic Center is the next big project. It's, it's our infrastructure. It touches every aspect of our student-athlete experience. And so that's something that we're finalizing the design, and, and we'll unveil those plans before too terribly long and start to raise money for that project. Current fan base may not really re remember this, but you're now 10 years into Apogee Stadium, but the Athletic Center was built in 2005. So from an athletic standpoint, it's getting a little long in the tooth. And, and it doesn't mean it's a bad building, but square footage probably isn't adequate right now. Well, as you know, as athletics has evolved, I mean, you just take football. We've added uh, several positions there, additional coaches, additional uh, analysts and other support positions. Um, you know, our athletic staff uh, has grown as most people have it, more trainers than they used to. There's an emphasis on health. We've added nutritionists, which we didn't have before. So just from a, a space of, of offices. And then when you look at things like the weight room, uh, there's so many advancements and in, in, in more equipment that we keep um, and, and, uh, and in athletic training as well. So all those areas uh, were probably honestly just barely uh, uh, big enough when we moved into them. That's the way building projects go a lot of times. And as time has, has gone and we've expanded the programs and expanded uh, the way that we support those programs, uh, we're definitely uh, busting at the seams and, and really need to make an investment. It's the key to continuing to provide a great experience to our student athletes and being competitive with all of our peer institutions. But also if we're to look in the future, if we ever are to look at expansion, we're gonna have to have that infrastructure uh, in place before we could uh, take on any additional sports. Well, boy, your track record over the last five years in knocking these things off the list has been nothing short of incredible. So hopefully those things that are still in the future uh, will come across as fluidly as some of the things you've already done, like the indoor practice facility, like this golf facility. And I know fans are always interested in that. They're also interested in what is your next thought on capacity? I know a lot can change between now and the start of the season, and this university is trying to really be careful. Um, but if full capacity is going to be on campus, can you expect the same at games? We're ready to rock and roll. Get your tickets. Buy your tickets. Uh, we're planning on 100%. We're planning on the full game day experience, um, tailgating, uh, having a great time in Apache, yelling north in Texas, and, and getting everybody fired up. And so, you know, I, I think uh, we'll obviously watch the trend lines and make sure that things are still headed to a good place. But if you look at the cases in Texas, you look at the cases nationally, uh, you look at vac vaccination rates uh, that are that are uh, increasing. I feel really, really good that we're going to have the full uh, game day experience, and I can't wait for it. I've missed it more than uh, – as much as the fans miss it, I think we probably miss it more, Hank, because it's uh, – we were at all those games, and it was a different experience. It's a year we'll never forget, but it's a year we don't ever want to repeat, and I, I'm just thankful that North Texas athletics got through it as carefully and as successfully as they did. Uh, thanks to your leadership, Niels, everybody else. A couple more questions coming through, and this is sort of a part two of what we just talked about. What are some goals for fan engagement if we're going to be at 100% ideas for football and athletics in general that you've been mowing? Yeah, we're we're looking at some of our marketing plans for the year now. Um, I would say they're probably 60, 70 percent complete and, and, and we'll have those wrapped up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so certainly um, I think one of the keys is to re remind everybody all of the great things about game day at Apogee. I mean, this is a place that 
is a beautiful stadium and, and it and it's a great place to watch a game great sight lines there's not a bad seat in the house um the tailgating atmosphere is second to none so just reminding people of, of what that experience is like um and then uh we've got several things that we're going to tie to the 10-year anniversary of apogee throughout the year and promotions and marketing and so we, we've tried to do a lot of uh new and 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 stay uh, fresh with all of our uh, fan uh, engagement and our at game atmosphere, and and we'll, we're going to continue to do that. And and I'd say stay tuned to all of our social media outlets because those plans will be getting unveiled very so there soon. There could be a wrestling ring in there somewhere. You know, if I have my choice, there would be there'd be a wrestling ring. I mean, I you know, my wife says, why why do you like pro wrestling? I said, why did you watch Young and the Restless when we were younger? I mean, it's the same thing. It's yeah. my soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than we expected to learn here today. You've always laid out a, a vision for this place, and uh, you're now looking at the next five years. Uh, some folks want to know what's included in that vision over the course of the next five to ten years. It's a great question. Um, you know, we're 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 at the five year mark. It's hard to believe that uh, that I've been here five years. It's it seems like it's just been yesterday that we were standing here uh, and I was being introduced and had my kids storm the stage in the middle of the press conference and uh, despite five years of maturing they'd probably do the same thing now um, but uh, you know I, I think as we sunset that initial five-year plan if you go back and and look uh, it's a credit to everybody we engaged not only coaches and staff and student athletes, but but also alumni and fans and, and and colleagues across campus to put that strategic plan together. And we've pretty well stayed on track with that plan. Uh, and so we're we're looking right now at what is the next five years. Here, here's what I can tell you: we're going to continue to stay focused on our student athlete uh, development uh, from the time they get here. And there's a new wrinkle to that with name, image, and likeness uh, passing. And we're going to learn. We're going to teach. We're going to educate and equip our, our student athletes to be prepared uh, for that environment. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's where our focus is really going to be. Um, you know, we, we added uh, one nutritionist, then we added a second, and then we have a, an, an intern now for a, kind of a third body there. Um, we just believe that if we continue to focus on uh, the fundamentals of helping young people grow athletically, uh, helping them grow as people and helping them grow academically. If we focus on those things, then we'll continue to set records and we'll continue to win games. You had three great ambassadors here today between Katie Davis, Quincy Noble, and of course, Thomas Bell. They're indicative of really the group you sit on top of every day, over 350 student athletes, but so many of them are just like the three we talked to today. Yeah, I, I would tell people at home, um, Obviously, the pandemic in this past year has been difficult on, on everybody, but there really isn't probably a way for me to put into words how difficult going through a sports season in this environment is. But, um, you know, we had we play at Arkansas and, and not only Coach McCaslin, but also Ross Hodge uh, have to go up in a separate car because they had tested positive the day before, ended up getting a second test. Uh, and it was negative. There was a lot of false uh, positives, especially early with some of the antigen tests that were going on. And um, so we just, my point in that uh, is, you know, whether it was men's basketball or football, where we're sitting around waiting on second confirmatory test on game day to know if we've got enough players to have a game. It was a very long, very arduous season. So when you zoom out and you look at the accomplishments that our coaches and our student athletes uh, had over the course of the year. It makes one of the best years in North Texas uh, athletics history uh, really even more remarkable. And I'm so proud of our student athletes and you did, you, you saw three great examples and there's many, many more. And uh, that's why it's important that we continue to get you to come out and buy tickets, that we continue to get people to, to, to support the Mean Green Scholarship Fund. Uh, those things are important because that allows us to get great young people like this and help them grow and develop. That's what it's all about. And we appreciate this opportunity to talk to coaches and those student athletes. Always appreciate your time, Ren. The summer will go by quick. So Ren's right. Start getting those tickets now. And uh, Claudia, we're going to send it back to you as we wrap up this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to visit with Mean Green coaches and student athletes. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. Thanks to everybody for being here today. We're so so thrilled to hear from these coaches and student athletes. It's been absolutely fantastic to hear about what's coming up for our, uh, our coaches and our athletes.